anyway. So next, the next thing uh, we're talking about is, is the last point here, the zero configuration file system discovery mounting, which is a feature that we added to systemd very recently. Um, and uh, we would like to make this better known because um, it's something that people really should know um, about. So um, something that uh, we wanted to make sure with, with uh, systemd and, and with the other stuff that we have been working on is um, that much of the configuration necessary to boot up the system isn't, isn't uh, strictly necessary anymore. Uh, but can be automatically determined um, from the from uh, what's actually on disk. So um, that uh, for a gummy boot, um, which there's going to be another talk here by Kai later on, this means basically that in gummy boot you don't really necessarily have to configure Windows or or Mac OS um, to show up in the boot menu. It will just find that automatically um, on the on the uh, um, hard disk. And then for for systemd. Um, uh, this uh, translates so that um, um, if Dracut, um, like, like the init RD, um, boots up, it's capable of finding automatically the root disk to boot from. Um, and for, for systemd then in the later boot process, this was me, would mean that the, the home directory and uh, swap petitions are automatically discovered simply be, because they exist on disk and enabled. The way um, we open this up is um, by using the, the GPT petition table. The GPT petition table has, um, like, I'm sure if you guys know that it's kind of the successor to the classic PC MBR petition table. And it has a couple of benefits. Um, one of them is that you can actually identify any petition on the system by its unique ID. But uh, another nice thing about it is that uh, um, the petitions also have a, have a UAD for the petition type. And there are a couple of petition types, well-known uh, petition types um, established that you find on the Wikipedia article, for example. For example, Windows uses one for data and one for the recover, uh, recovery petition has a different type for whatever else they need. Traditionally on Linux, um, there are only two types defined. One of them is the swap petition type and the other, other one is for all kinds of data petitions. Um, with uh, the stuff that we've been doing with systemd now, we will introduce a couple of more petition types um, to mark certain petition, uh, petitions. Like there's one for the root petition, and there's one for the home petition, and then we reuse the already defined one for the swap petition. And the idea is basically that, uh, yeah, when systemd um, boots up, it will look through the, the GPT petition table of the disk that was booted from, not, on, not from any other. We'll go through the list of petitions, we'll see, okay, there's a swap device, we'll enable that one. Um, if it sees a home petition, it will automatically mount that. Um, and uh, of course, Dracut in the first place will have been looking for the root device um, like that as well. The, the idea of, uh, in that context is, of course, that this is always only the fallback if nothing mainly has been configured, for example, for the root um, uh, file system, this would be on the Drake on the kernel command line, basically where you write root, but if you would omit it, then we would try to automatically find it. Um, for slash home, this also means um, that uh, uh, we will not do that if slash home is already populated, right? It will only be activated if, if uh, the home directory is actually empty. Um, so it's basically, the idea is basically to, to, to make sure that if people have an, have, have an explicitly configured setup or have any, yeah, um, that does not require that, that it's not done. But uh, yeah, if it's, uh, if it's found and if there's nothing mounted yet, then we'll uh, work that way. Um, there are certain complexities, of course, with uh, multi-boot systems, because in multi-boot systems, you, of course, might have uh, multiple root disks. Um, uh, but uh, the logic here is that if this automatic um, discovery is used, then we always only use the first one, which mimics a bit how, how the um, UEFI um, uh, um, system looks for the um, EFI system petition, uh, where the initial bootloader is lo loaded from. So, yeah, and the, the idea, like, I mean, we, we could even add um, this logic for further petition types, like, for example, for automatically discovered slash var and uh, um, yeah, similar petitions. The reason we are not doing that, at least not doing that for now, is simply because it is relatively safe to match swap devices of other, uh, of other Linuxes with, with um, the root petition of, of, of something that doesn't belong together. But it becomes really problematic if the same happens. Where, like, let's say you have installed Fedora and SUSE on the same system, and if this automatic discovery then ends up matching the slash var from the SUSE with the root partition of the um, uh, Fedora, then bad things happen. Um, since this problem does not really apply that much to slash home, we do it for slash home. 
And because it doesn't apply at all to slash if for the swap petitions, we do it for the swap petitions. And because it doesn't apply to this root petition itself, we also do it for that, but we do not do that for slash var. Other operating systems like Solaris um, actually do it for slash var and, and other petitions as well. Um, the net result, there's a next question. Um, so currently, in the, in the stuff that's in system, the uh, encryption is not handled, but the idea is, I actually have some code on my, on my laptop for that. The idea is basically that, um, yeah, this auto-discovery figures out what kind of petition that actually is. If it's XT3, it will just be mounted. However, if it is locks, then it will be prompted, uh, then the user will be prompted for a password. And then we check again what's actually on it and then mount it. So the idea is basically, um, yeah, yeah, if the petition type is set, it really doesn't matter much what's in it as long as Linux can somehow read it, be it via some standard file system that Linux can understand or locks. There's another question. Is this purely I'm sorry? Is this purely So the question is if this was purely a Dracut feature and for the RAMFS. So um, no, uh, it's a systemd feature. Um, so uh, the Dracut runs systemd these days. And, um, uh, and, and the Arc Linux um, initRD runs systemd, in, or can at least run uh, systemd in initRD as well. Um, uh, basically, when systemd runs in the initRD, it will be capable of automatically finding the root disk that way. If it runs in the, in the host system, then it will find the, the swap devices in, in the home petitions that way. Um, but yeah. There are still some pieces missing. There are still some pieces missing in, in UDEF to, to get the, the, root, the, disk, the disk where we put it from. Yeah. Oh. <coughs> yeah. So um, the net result of all of that is that at least if you, if you have a simple system that doesn't uh, use any specific um, petition uh, setup, then you can simply uh, set up the petitions on your petition table and you can ship with an empty etcfs tab and you do not have to specify anything anymore on the kernel command line. Uh, the entire system will be capable of booting up just like that and um, uh, assemble everything um, uh, properly. And you can move petitions around between machines and it will still work, which yeah. is different from what we do today. Of course, um, for this to all, all to work properly, uh, what we require from the, from the installation programs of the various distributions is that they actually make use of these GPT um, type IDs. Uh, for the swap petitions, they all do. Uh, Fedora currently doesn't even, like Fedora actually sets for GPT data petitions, the Microsoft Windows um, uh, uh, GPT type, which is very, very wrong because that's how Windows actually um, discovers what it should show up as, as, as drive letters. Um, so Fedora is really broken in that area. So uh, what we actually want from the distributions there is that they, that they yeah, if, if uh, um, some petition during installation is, is um, Mark to be mounted to slash home that they should actually use this new GPT type that we defined. Um, and uh, for the root petition, use a different one. And then for all the other petitions that are set up via the, the, the install program, they should use the Linux um, data petition thing. Um, yeah, we, this is something that we have to figure out with the Anaconda developers for Fedora, but the other distributions, um, we'd really like to see adopt the same thing. Um, it would already be a big benefit if they would use it, these GPT types. If they use a discovery, of course, it's, the, it's, the, it's another thing. Uh, as mentioned, um, we, we do this in this case um, for simple setups, and in, because it's not risky, if you mix them and match them incorrectly, we just say, okay, we pick the first one. Right? Because um, it might actually work uh, relatively well to share a home directory between multiple installations. But of course, it is a shortcoming. Uh, we, ideally, um, the, the GPT petition table would actually inc allow us to specify a third um, um, a UUID and everything, how we can mix them all together. Yeah, but we don't want to do that. <laughs> I mean, we could do stuff like we, we even could misuse the label. Though. I mean, <laughs> on GPT, on GPT, you can even put a label on on, on petitions, um, which is different from putting a label on a file system. We could use that, but we decided no. Um, this is the misuse of GPT, and I don't know. This is not intended to be something that is used 
for all systems, right? It's something that can be used for, for um, like desktop systems, for example, which have a very clearly defined thing. And when, then where, where basically the configuration of the system becomes entirely stateless and the install, installer doesn't have to touch Etsy at all anymore because FSTAP can be really empty, right? Virtual machine images. Yeah, and it's also interesting for virtual machine in, in images and, and these kind of things where, where basically, yeah, you just have to set up your image. You don't have to register anything anywhere anymore. It's just about... Um, putting together the petitions and labeling the, cor the yeah. correct way. Typical use case might be that you copy the stuff to a USB stick and move it around. It will still work. You don't have to look what IDs were used in the real system. It's just the existence of the partitions with a certain type will make the set of system set up itself. What, what exactly do you want to uh, configure? Like, so your, your root file system requires certain plans to get from Well, I mean, usually I would assume that ButterFS includes all that information in the, in the file system matter. Just an example. I mean, you can always specify whatever you want to specify. That, that always takes precedence, right? The, the administrator, the owner of the machine, um, he can override this automatism you absolutely can always. You put it in and it gets remounted when it's mounted. Like, like we do the remounting for the rewrite, so it's not different than that. Now you mentioned, so this is part of system D, and you mentioned uh, you're going into containers, so it's near and dear to my heart currently. Um, why are you switching this logic on, like, I had to deal with mesh cookies already. Why are you switching this logic on for when you're running in like an LXC container that you're not going to So in containers? In containers, all of this does not really apply because containers already got. That, there's been a number of things that shouldn't have applied, but we didn't know that we had the time to keep it from doing anything. I mean, it's already enabled, actually, the GPT stuff in, in, in the current system versions. But the thing is, um, um, it won't find anything, right? Because the devices are not available in LXC containers usually. But the thing is, like. But again, like the, the entire thing is written um, completely defensive in the way that if slash home is already found to be populated, it will not be mounted. If there's explicitly something configured for slash home, it will not take effect. So this is really written defensive style so that it's only like the, the absolute fallback if there's nothing, nothing else configured. I don't know. I, um, I think we're talking about different things. Containers and petition tables and block devices, that, that's two different things. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, we're, this is not about virtual machines, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, anyway, I think the, the, the tea break's supposed to begin any moment, so but let's, like, if you have more questions. Do you have at least a single URL about this? Um, uh, yeah, the, I mean, that's, this is, it's, it's in the man, like, that's man page documentation, systemd. Um, it should be, like, if you go to the systemd man page, uh, the systemd home page, and go to the man pages link, and then look for GPT, you'll find that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's relatively new stuff. I, it's, it's only added um, to systemd tree, um, like, a month ago, so. Um, anybody else got any questions? Um, we have this talk later on in the part of here that that's about the C group um, thing, and then let's cover that there. It's after after the tea break. It's like I, actually it's the next thing after the tea break, and I, I think the tea break is supposed to be um, no. starting one minute ago. But anyway, if one one last question on this topic, if somebody has anything, otherwise we'll release you to the tea. That's one question. Can you bring your slides online? Um, these slides? <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course, if you look, if you'd like. But uh, what was that? It's oh, that's Harold. Anyway, so there are no questions. So thank you very much. Um, see you in, uh, I think, 15, 15 minutes. In 15 minutes, um, and then we'll talk about C groups.